Well, we're only advisors. You make your own laws. But I think you'll find that your new law is a good law. Gaining control of this Middle East Central Asian region, knocking down any obstacles, whether they be in the form of anti-U.S. movements or states such as Iraq, Iran, Syria that weren't firmly under U.S. control. Once having done this and gained control of this region, uh, Bush, Cheney, and company felt this would put the United States in a position, it would be a key element of preventing the rise of any challenger to U.S. power globally or regionally. And of course, the two main countries they've been worried about are Russia and China. Now, this is something that these people conceive of as essential to the functioning of U.S. capitalism and to the continuation of the United States' role as the world's leading superpower. This isn't a frivolous or capricious exercise in their view. Now, of course, uh, within the ruling class, there are plenty of people who argue they mishandled it and so on and so forth. But the, the core uh, view, now one of the great ironies here is that the United States went into Iraq as we all know, on the basis of very naked and blatant lies. There was no intelligence failure. They knew full well Saddam Hussein was not a grave and gathering threat and that he had been largely disarmed. But they felt that Iraq would be a good first step after Afghanistan to establish themselves in the region and from there take on Iran, take on Syria, forcibly uh, crush the Palestinian struggle, strengthen Israel as a regional gendarme, and so on. But the irony is that Iraq has boomeranged. Iraq has actually weakened U.S. power in the region, strengthened Iran's power, and in that way actually added to the necessity they feel to take Iran down. Now the U.S. government is building the case for another unjust war, this time with Iran. The goal once again is regime change, to reclaim Iran as a client state favorable to U.S. military and corporate interests, including non-opposition to the Israeli government. Like Iraq, we are hearing more stories about Iran supporting terrorism and more warnings not to wait for the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. There are some similarities and some differences and once again, the news media is failing to give us the information we need, preferring instead to act as a megaphone for our government. You know, it's really important as a first step towards preventing war on Iran that people keep in mind as they hear any rhetoric that's pushing towards war to have a skeptical eye. That the history of buildups to war, not just in Iraq or Iran, is, is rhetoric that is built on lies, the classic Vietnam Gulf of Tonkin, and just to not buy into it and be prepared for the big lie and be prepared not to believe it. As a great journalist from the 20th century, I.F. Stone said when he would introduce a topic to a journalism class, he'd say, there's two words that you get out of this class, let it be government's lie. 